Um, should we? Should we? I, I think we should just start now. I've logged in. Check. Okay, I'm in now. All right, man. Hello, can you hear me? Well, yeah, I can see. <laughs> yes, I can. <laughs> okay, ladies. So, how do we? How do we? Okay, if you if you oh. touch your. Oh, I'm seeing you. How are you? <laughs> Princess. Wow. Good to see uh -huh. you. How are you? Let us see your video now, Princess. <laughs> <laughs> Where do we put this? Should I see? Should I see this? If you if you if you move your castle yeah. at the bottom, you will yeah. see video. Yeah. Start video. Mm -hmm. uh, we haven't seen video. <laughs> Start video, so we'll see you. It's not sure. Uh, it's not sure. If somebody will come and help me. <laughs> okay, no problem. Okay. No problem. Um, what what you should do? Move your cursor mm -hmm. around the room. Then at the bottom bar, you would see mute. Start video. Yes, I can see your video now. Zoom. I can see you are coming on. Yes. Yeah, hey, you. good morning, princess. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, if you look at the bottom, How are you, Angie? welcome so I'm much, sure. man. Welcome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If you look at the bottom, there's a place that says share screen. I'm going right to sharing my yeah. screen. Do you want yeah. me to share my screen now? Yes, share. Let's see what will happen. I, it will share now. What else uh, will happen? I want, I want to be sure that you can share. So click share screen. Share. And I then share clicked. your screen. You they said yeah. host disabled participant screen sharing. Please okay. enable because I want to show my screen by myself. Okay. Okay. I want to project my slides myself. Have you enabled? Yourself. I'm, I'm not seeing the place that asks, that says I can enable. So let me ask the people you blocked in my server. You. Eh? They say you blocked me. I, I share screen, but it's saying post. I'm going back to share screen again. Does it allow you? Post disabled participant screen sharing. Okay, no problem. Let me, let me, let me share my screen. Can Just you see that? Because I have done a, a lot of modifications on my. Okay, all right. So, let me let you share. Okay, so try share now. Let's see. Okay. Okay, that's me now. Okay, fantastic. That's it, two slides. Don't worry, because some <laughs> of them are just, uh, some of them are just uh, pleasantries. 
You won't oh, call okay. this one a slide, would you? Oh. We are just going to talk Re to them. Okay, huh? uh, do slideshow, let's see. Okay, you want me to put it in full? In slideshow, slide yeah. Show. Okay. Yeah, that one. Are you happier? Fantastic. Mwah, mwah, mwah. <laughs> okay. Uh, we'll move from here. Okay, ma. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So, enables you to see. Yes, we can see well. Okay. Is the lead speaker. That's fine. So you see that the transition slides are not in full light. Okay. Done. Okay. Fantastic. So essentially, we're just going to talk about the health systems, what um, what constitutes okay. a functional health system. And most of my examples of um, information that strengthens health system, that's information that strengthens um, quality of care, because when you enhance quality, you are actually, it's going to reflect on the health system, are going to be drawn from the area of reproductive maternal newborn health because that's where i practice okay. and I, I, my examples would be coming all the time from there no problem before we continue i want you to move your camera in such a way that when you are when we are looking at you because right now we're seeing one corner of your eye so find a spot where you, you can are you see sure i have two <laughs> <laughs> so that we can we can see you well. Okay, can you? I, like, I love your earrings, ma. I love oh, your earrings. I love them. <laughs> I have such huge danglas in my ears. I know it's beautiful. That's what we want. Mm. <laughs> okay, so find a position where you are comfortable presenting, and your picture that is showing is still okay. Okay, is it okay now? It is, but is it okay for you? Because you are the most important person here. Hey, how are you yes. sure? What have you yes. a national president? And she has, not, she has not called me yet. Please wait now. For now, it's just three of us. <laughs> you both are the most important people here. <laughs> Mark Campbell, your picture is beautiful. The way you're sitting is fine. Look at her smile, even. I'm telling you, see her hair. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. So, Mark, I'm back. Try now. Let's see whether you can share your slide. I'm done, eh? So, I should stop sharing. No, don't don't worry. Don't stop sharing. I want to see if she can she can share while you are, okay. you are sharing. Okay. Mark Amber, can you share your slide? They should tell you what to do because during the meeting, um, you should do it by yourself. Where are your, your bodies? Make sure they are sitting right there with you. Are they there? Oh, she's gone. Oh, what happened? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, let me share my screen. Okay, share yours. Yeah. In fact, let me open the other one so that when I'm introducing you, I can read. I can read everything. We have, oh, she's there. Let me admit her. 
Mouth alone means that. Okay. A time will come when I will just admit everybody without knowing who is who. I'm seeing six people waiting. Don't you, I, are we starting already? It's not yet 11. No, we're not, it's not yet 11. Uh, okay, okay. Make sure the people you are admitting are the, just the speakers. Mm. Yeah. Panelists. Yes. Hello, Martha Laurie. Okay, she hasn't joined with her audio yet. She hasn't joined with her audio yet. And we don't have her picture. We do. Okay, no, maybe we don't have. No, we My... can't see her video. Tell her to join with her. Uh -uh. Princess, no, you are back. Oh, okay, join again. Uh -uh. Wow. Both of them have gone. Both of them have gone out. Too. Ma, join again, join again. Okay, she's back again. So, who is missing? The national president? Yes. Yes. Um, the thing is that there are six people waiting and I can't see them. And you don't know their names? Don't I let don't... them know because... No, 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 will... I can't see. They are medical women and I know them. But I don't want to, to admit them yet because we are still doing internal things. Yeah, don't admit them. They, they, should, they will know they have to wait. It's 11 you advertise. Yes, Have we matured 11? No, we still have five minutes to go. So you are going to share your screen. Good morning, yes. Professor Ogu, Good morning. Professor Good morning, Ma. and Professor Shikobus. Let me see your face. Now you can see my face. I'm happy yes, to Ma. see you all. Thank you very much. Oh, there she is. Oh, Good morning. Good morning, morning, Professor Polo, and good morning, good Professor Carmen. I see you right yes. at from. Nice to see you all. Yes. Are you Thank seeing you. it? I'm sharing. I'm seeing all of you. I'm seeing okay, all so of you. Okay, so you can share now. Are you sharing? Yeah. Yes. Rosemary, do you want me to stop sharing? No, the way I designed it, once you, you are done, you don't need to stop. Another person can start. Eh. Hey. Okay. So what are you seeing on your screen now? Me? Yes, ma. What are you seeing? I'm still seeing my slide. I can't see any other person. Eh. Hey. That's why I'm asking. Meanwhile, I thought it, I was sharing. No, I can't see your slide. Okay, so stop sharing. Mark the... Um, Ma, can you try and share? Ma, come there. Ma, come there. Share, share. share your okay. screen. Ma, Otolori, can you try and share your screen after Ma, come there? I'm seeing Ma, come there's screen now. I can't see her screen, though. I just see her name, that's all. That's, that's what I'm seeing, too. I thought that's her screen. Um, Ma, she, they say Beautiful. she has started scaring oh, Yes. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Excellent. Excellent, excellent. All right, so. Are you seeing? Yes, we can see your screen and it's beautiful. We can see your screen, it's beautiful. All right. Mao Tolori, can you share your screen? She's muted. Okay, yeah. No, we she has not mute. Fantastic, beautiful, beautiful. Okay.
Okay, that's fine. We'll soon start. In another one minute, I'll start um, letting the people at the waiting room to come in. Any questions? All right, so I'm letting everyone in now. You have about two minutes to go. Yes, ma. We'll start letting people in now so that it builds up. Welcome, everyone. Hi, hey. beautiful. Good morning. Hey. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. You're Good morning. welcome, ma. Thank you. Why balance? Morning, Prof. Professor Kolo. Good morning, ma. Greetings from Abuja. Ah, Madam President. Welcome, okay. ma. Zona. Hi. Hey. Good morning. Good morning. Madam President, you're welcome. Hi, President. Good morning. Good morning, uh, my president. Good morning. God bless you. Good morning. Wonderful Good morning. day. Oh, greetings from Abuja live. Yes. Ah. And, and Madam Epi, good morning. My medical elders, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. My house. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Ma, Debbie, you're welcome. Good morning, everyone. Thank Professor you. Good morning, good morning, my prof. Good morning, good morning. 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 Ma. Good morning. Ma. Nice to see you. Good morning. Yes, ma. Good, good morning, morning, Madam everybody. President. Madam President, good morning. Good morning. Oh, good morning. Thank you. Ah, ah. Good morning, Mama. Nice to see you. Good morning. Good morning. Prof. Okolo, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Ma. Good morning, Prof. Ma. Good morning, Ma. Good morning, Ma. Good morning. Ma. Good morning, Ma. Good morning, Ma. I can hear you. Good morning. Good morning. Professor good morning. Campbell, Ma. Good morning, Ma. Prof. Campbell, good morning. Morning, how are you? Good morning, ma. Good morning, ma. Campbell. Good, good morning, ma. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. I'm just giving it um, one or two minutes to see if Ma Wokocha will join in. She's joining in from the US. It's about 5 a.m. now. Yeah, it's quite so we'll just give her one or two minutes. <laughs> So um, I've taken the liberty to mute everyone so that the interference is not so much. You're all welcome. Good morning, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. We are gathered here today for the special symposium on the post neck meeting, the M1 2019-2021 biennium. Um, incidentally, this is the first year anniversary 
And so we're having this special symposium to talk about health systems, talk about what we can do. We have seasoned speakers who are, who are, who are with us today. In another eight minutes, the national president will give us her welcome address. So just sit back, relax. Let's get more people into the waiting room. Good morning, everyone. Madam President, please unmute so you can talk with us. Okay. It's a beautiful day here in Abuja. We thank God for his grace. The next meeting went successfully, and now we have the post next symposium. There is no end to learning. And we're very excited that M1, we are moving collectively in leaps and bounds to new heights. So I'm sure we're going to have a wonderful day. Well done for the entire team, scientific committee of the technical advocacy and legislative working group, and everybody, guest speakers who have come here today. God will bless you all. In Jesus' name. Amen. I was doing something and you didn't just need, are you removing kindly? I did counsel. I beg join you, I need you to join. I beg you. All right, ladies, uh, we've given some five minutes and um, our past president um, hasn't joined yet. Uh, I'd like us to, to continue. We're all medical women. We are all people who are interested in health. We have people who are not medical women in this meeting as well. You're all welcome. Um, I see a lot of us here. You're welcome. It's, it's so gratifying to see people here. For the men who have, who have um, joined us, welcome, welcome. At 11.10, our national president will give us our opening remarks. So sit back and relax. Keep joining. We, we are expecting 500 participants. We've just done 10% of that. And so please um, send reminders to all state presidents who are here. Send reminders to your members. Let them keep joining. It's a beautiful event that has been arranged. You'll be glad you, you, you are part of it. So keep getting people to join. Um, the first lecture will, 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 
will be in another 10, 13 minutes. But before then, we'll have our national president give us her welcome remarks, and then we'll go on. What we're doing here is a special symposium for the second M1 2019-2021 biennium. We've just finished the National Executive Council meeting. And so we are having this symposium on strengthening health systems through health data management and social mobilization, experiences from research, administration, and academia. So wherever you find yourself, everyone is an administrator in their house, in their homes. So wherever you find yourself, this is a symposium for you to listen in. Whether you're doing research, whether you're doing academia, whether you're doing administration. So this is for all of us. So sit back and relax. We have our speaker, Professor Angela Okolo, and then we have panelists, Professor Campbell and Dr. Adikemi Sit back, relax. You'll be glad you did. Madam President, National President of the Medical Women's Association of Nigeria, Dr. Mininim Oseji, over to you, ma'am. Dr. Sergi, over to you, ma. I just started. I, I didn't know I was. Are you hearing me? We can hear you now, ma. Oh, fantastic. I had actually started. So let me start again. I bring you greetings from the National Secretariat of the Medical Women's Association of Nigeria, M1, domiciled in Asaba Delta State with permanent headquarters in Abuja, Federal Capital Territory, where we just concluded the second M1 2019-2021 Biennium National Executive Council NEC meeting. The special symposium on strengthening health systems through health data management and social mobilization, experiences from research, administration, and academia is a follow-up event to the two-day continuous medical education program, which held during the next meeting on 14th and 15th September, 2020. I especially welcome our guest speaker slash neonatology and past M1 national president, she is my number one mentor in the whole world. I also welcome the panelists, Professor Christina Campbell, a pediatrician, health systems management expert, and past M1 national president, as well as Dr. Lidian Adekemi Otolori, M1 national president-elect and retired permanent secretary for your state. We have remarkable medical women all over the country who are eager to contribute their own quota to improving the health sector in Nigeria. We are advocating to governments at local, state, and national level to give these medical women appointments so that they can do much more than they are already doing. The challenges we are facing in the health sector in Nigeria and Sub-Saharan Africa are enormous, but not insurmountable. We just need to look inwards and stop expecting the other person to be the one to solve all the problems. That is why M1 is aggressively advocating for transparency in the health sector, as well as timely implementation of resolutions of meetings by relevant stakeholders. In the past one year as national president, I have been initiating programs to strategically position M1 members to walk the walk after talking the talk. Talk is cheap. It is getting the job done that determines who is the master. At this junction, I want to thank all who have contributed greatly to making this a reality. 
especially the scientific committee of the M1 Technical Advocacy and Legislative Working Group, chaired by Professor Rosemary Ogu, whom I describe as beauty with brains. I warmly welcome all who have taken our time to be here and pray for a memorable outing. Thank you and God bless. Thank you very much, Madam President. Thank you so much. And so we'll move on to our guest lecturer. She is Professor Angela Anene Okolo, who's going to give us a talk on strengthening health systems through health data management and social mobilization, experiences from research, administration, and academia. Professor Angela Anene Okolo is a pediatrician and neonatal health specialist. She's a medical graduate from of Lovanium University of Kinshasa, DRC, and she's bilingual. She's a fellow of the Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons of Glasgow and the Royal College of Pediatrics and Child Health in the UK. She's also a fellow of the National Postgraduate Medical College of Nigeria and the West African College of Physicians. She's a gold medal awardee of the West African College of Physicians. The 1986-87 Irene Rodaro Gold Medal Awardee of the Medical Women's Association of Nigeria and a past president, national president of the Medical Women's Association of Nigeria. She is a retired professor of pediatrics, not tired, of the University of Benin and has accrued experiences of more than 30 years in the practice of neonatal medicine in West Africa. She's active in postgraduate medical education activities and has worked with international agencies and development partners at regional and sub-regional levels. She currently practices neonatology at the Federal Ministry of Nigeria. She's also an advisor to the Nigerian Society for Neonatal Medicine. Please join me to welcome Professor Angela Okolo. You are on, ma'am. Prof, please. Oh dear. Okay, yes, I have can hear you now. myself now. So, I'd like to share my screen. Please go ahead, ma. Okay. Can you now see my screen? Yes, ma'am. I'm setting it on the slideshow. Slideshow. Okay. So, without further ado, I'm trying to close a screen. I don't know why that screen appeared here. Anyway. I have closed the screen and I have lost sharing. Try again, ma. I wonder what happened to the sharing of my screen. Maybe the internet um, was a bit um, unstable, so just share again, ma. Please. Okay. Thank you. Share. The issue is that I can't even see my, it's my internet problem, but it worked just now. I can't even see my screen again. What we are seeing here, it's your, the Zoom. That's what I'm seeing too. This is not- Navigate. Right. Okay. Navigate. I hope we can share the screen now. Yes. So select um, that's it there. Okay. Now I'm going to start sharing. I hope it works. Okay. Fantastic. Okay. 
we're on now. Sorry for the um, interlude. Now, here is the outline for my presentation, distinguished colleagues. We are going to start by defining terms, what we understand by the health system, data management and research, and what we think could strengthen the health system. We are going to uh, end up talking about different experiences from research and management, and we'll conclude. So we want to define the health system as, as the system involved in the provision and attainment of health. And in this concept, we have to share some ideas. Um, we'd like to share the idea, the concept uh, that work together in a balanced manner to produce the ultimate outcome. Our ultimate outcome here is the health provided to an individual or to an entire community. We have um, borrowed some model that is patient focused and we have the care teams, the organization and the environment. Here again, we have blown up this so that the message could go down better. Then the individual patients, even at this level, will, they requires information and communication because that's the major driver to quality care. The individual clients, no matter their level, appreciate quality care. And information, communication drives the major area of our concern, the area of universal access to quality care. And what are the key components of a well-functioning health system? A well-functioning health system responds in a balanced way to a population's need and expectation by improving their health status, defending the population against what threatens their health, protecting people against the financial consequences of ill health, providing equitable access to people-centered care, making it possible for people to participate in decisions affecting their health and the health system. So let's have all this at the back of our minds in the course of this presentation. A well-functioning health system needs a good leadership and policy because the health systems are subject to powerful forces that override rational policy making and hence the need for strong policies and leadership to make systems run properly. And in this way, the balanced responses should focus on curative, preventive, and integrative approaches rather than fragmentation into multiplicity of competing programs. Keeping health systems on track requires a strong sense of direction. And this sense of direction, mind you, we gather from the leadership and governance. The implementation of these concepts require a good policy that, revo that refocuses and revolves around the leadership and governance. Good leadership is guided by policy implementation. She defines through health policies and strategies, clear lines of implementation to ensure complete coverage of the entire sector. There is the need for a strategy for translating into implications for financing for human material and infrastructural resource needs. So it's not just the, uh, to have the policy in place, we need an implementation strategy. The strategy would be, would detail the mechanisms for accountability, for constantly informing on the state of implementation, highlight the means of effective policy dialogue with other sectors, Hence, we have to keep constantly reminding ourselves that health has to interact with other sectors to achieve good outcomes. A typical example is looking at the situation of water and sanitation. To achieve good health outcomes, we must be able to work with the uh, with, um, sections managing water manage we have to work with agriculture for good nutrition so we need to have 
a good strategy that will enable policy dialogue with other sectors. And we need to highlight the mechanisms and institutional arrangements to channel do not funding and align it to country priorities. We need to highlight the means of constantly informing the leadership about the state of implementation of this policy. The health information, the, the health information system involves gathering and utilization of data to improve and manage health outcomes. And good governance is only possible with good information on health challenges, on the broader environment in which the health system operates, and on the performance of the health system. At all moments, good information gathering is key. And this would inform policy and policy implement, implementation. And this will provide the timely intelligence required. Progress in meeting health challenges and social objectives, including but not limited to household surveys, must be ensured. Uh, for example, the civil registration systems have got to be fully operational because we would not be able to catch up with population dynamics if we don't have a good pet registration and debt registration system. And if we don't have a good epidemiological surveillance, we won't be able to assure um, a, a good outcome. Good governance also relies on good financial plans. Health financing, including thorough national health accounts and an analysis of financial catastrophes and of financial and other barriers to health services for the poor and vulnerable. And good governance follows trends on the needs for human resources, of consumption of and access to pharmaceuticals, on appropriateness and cost of technology, on access to care and the quality of services provided. The financial implementation plans requires a variety of institutional mechanisms. It needs a national monitoring and evaluation plan that specifies core indicators and has targets. And data collection and management analysis and communication is needed. Such information gathered should be accessible to all involved, including the communities, civil society, health professionals, and politicians. Health financing is key policy instrument to improving health and reduce the uh, health in inequities, so as to achieve the primary objective of facilitating universal coverage by removing financial barriers to access and preventing financial hardship and catastrophic expenditure. So the following lines would facilitate these outcomes. There should be a system to raise sufficient funds for health fairly, a system to pool financial resources across population groups to share financial risks, a financing governance system supported by relevant legislation financial audits and public expenditure reviews and clear operational rules to ensure efficient use of funds. Human, a good strategy and policy requires a good human resource, men, resource management plan. The health workforce is key to achieving health. So a well-performing workforce is one that is responsive to the needs and expectations of people is fair and efficient to achieve the best outcome, possibly given available resources and circumstances. The key common tony areas of concern in human resource management include improving recruitment, education and retention, retraining and training and distribution. Because distribution is major issue. The, 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 Human resource for health may want to remain in central areas, whereas the, uh, the remote areas are deprived of quality res uh, human resource. So these are challenges that are encountered often. 
Human resource management requires arrangements for achieving sufficient numbers and the right mix, payment systems that produce the right kind of incentive, regulatory measurement mechanisms to ensure system-wide deployment and distribution in accordance with needs, establishment of job-related norms, mechanisms to ensure cooperation of all stakeholders right to the grassroots. The, also, a strategy requires essential medical products and technologies. Hence, there should be universal access to healthcare um, which is heavily dependent on access to affordable essential medicines and commodities. Economically, medical products are the second largest component of most health budgets after salaries, and the medical products are the largest component of private health expenditure in low and middle income countries. What are the key components of health commodity system? The system, uh, the key components comprise a medical products regulatory system, and a monitoring system, universal access to essential medical products, a national medical products availability and price monitoring system, a national program to promote rational a, a prescription. The health systems are only as effective as the services they provide. Thus, this would depend critically on networks of close to client primary care organized as health districts or local area networks with backup of specialized and hospital services responsible for defined populations. We are drawing example from the primary healthcare system, which in Nigeria attempts to provide universal access and coverage, functions as clusters linked to a comprehensive healthcare center, primary healthcare facilities. Um, I want to give an example of how information enabled the functioning of, um, of the health facilities, and a strengthened outcomes in reproductive health. Because in 2007, the West African Health Organization, a body at the effect of policy drafts to inform ECOWAS health ministers and states, in the conduct of their regular service to identify the level and state of reproductive health uh, uh, commodities um, supplies, identified huge gaps in the uptake of commodities, and that led to the development of advocacy strategy for policy implementation to dedicate a budget line to reproductive health and commodity security. This was in the bid to ensure attainment of better reproductive health outcomes. This was the, in the bid to improve outcomes in the area of reproductive health care delivery. Again, how do we effectively use data to improve the health system and quality care? A good, a, a, in the health system, a package of benefits with comprehensive integrated range of clinical and public health interventions should respond to the full range of the health problems of the population including those targeted by the Millennium and Sustainable Development Goals. Hence, in Nigeria, childhood immunization are covered in infancy and are well documented to generate information as to the level of coverage and uptake. Such information on coverage and uptake inform policy on supplies to cover childhood immunization for health protection of this section of the population. This aspect targets infant and young child mortality reduction. Surveillance and monitoring data had shown that common cause of under five mortality are infections and malnutrition. Hence, such information informed policy 
on infant and young child nutrition. Hence, in 1991, follow up to the Innocenti Declaration of 1990, the Baby Friendly Hospital Initiative was established as the global strategy for, inf for targeting infant and young child malnutrition. Breastfeeding was a, is a proven cost-effective intervention, and hence, the program elicited an ill-sustained intensive breastfeeding campaign to promote, protect, and support breastfeeding through the fostering of the Baby Friendly Hospital Initiative. That initiative in the 1990s has achieved a breastfeeding rate in Nigeria of 45%, exclusive breastfeeding rate of 45%, but it was ill-sustained because of the approaches. Now our current breastfeeding rate is decreased 17%, and so has the malnutritional rates increase equally. Now, effective health systems provide standards, norms, and guidance to ensure access and essential dimensions of quality, safety, effectiveness, integration, continuity, and people-centeredness. Mechanisms to hold providers accountable for access and quality and to ensure consumer voice must be enshrined in effective health systems. So health systems effectiveness are also largely dependent on leadership, governance policies, and policies. The strength of implementation of policies lies on the strategies and policy formulation governed by the strength of information. Even at that, um, we are looking at universal access and information communication drives access to healthcare at all times. So improving out health outcomes through data management, again, an example of the evidence derived from um, research that shows linkages between reproductive health, maternal neonatal health delivered via community-based intervention packages reduce neonatal mortality. Therefore, this demonstrates that reproductive health, maternal and neonatal health are inextricably linked and that health policies and programs should link them together for greater impact and better outcomes. This is enforced practice as the mother newborn diet are always considered together in the bid to achieve lower mortality rates. This practice or this information has enhanced the standard of perinatal care practice today. Another example of how information strengthened the quality of care and health system is derived from the, the survey of the West African Health Organization in 2005 in the context of implementation of reduction of maternal and prenatal um, neonatal deaths, conducted a survey of 10, 11 primary health care centers located in 10 African, West African countries. The findings of this survey indicated that there was lack of coordination where there was weak communication between the entire systems, ineffective engagement of the three tiers of health systems and their communities. There was poor data collection and use of data for action. There was weak reporting mechanisms and lack of community engagement. This is contained in the World Technical Report. The remedial measures taken with that information established the WAHU Demonstration Community Linkage Program backed with an effective community um, communication strategy and social mobilization plan to ensure community engagement. This program was evaluated mid-term two years after its setup. It showed 17% enhancement in the performance of the linkage program and effective communication with the community. 
In this program, the tertiary centers monitored right through to, uh, to secondary and primary, and also involved in well, were involved in the community um, mobilization process and getting the community involved and in their own needs. Again, as example of how information has strengthened the performance, we look at the pre-pregnancy periconceptual folic acid supplementation. It, it was derived from evidence that supplementation has a significant protective effect on neural tube defects. And folic acid supplementation in pregnancy is practiced today, and this has enhanced the quality of prenatal care because the administration of folic acid had also shown some degree of reduction of, of impact on steel beds, although this was not significant. Again, another example of how quality had improved and strengthened the health system utilization is the administration of calcium supplementation to, in the prevention of hypertensive disorders of pregnancy. Although the evidence is inconclusive, most studies are required in such trials. Bed spacing has been shown to impact on neonatal mortality. Short birthing intervals has been linked with increased risk of neonatal mortality. And hence, the family planning programs are working to improve uptake because the extent of their achievement in uptake will influence bed spacing and eventually optimal uh, reproductive maternal newborn um, health outcomes. Now, improving healthcare financing through health information and data management system. The, there was a study in Nairobi, urban slums, of 60,000 individuals from 23,000 households that showed that only 10% of respondents were participating in the, their national health insurance finance scheme, whilst less than 1% had private insurance. That meant that 89% of the respondents did not have any type of insurance coverage. This informed a government policy to uh, look into how to transform their national health information insurance uh, finance into a universal health program because they had microfinance schemes whereby the urban poor were engaged in and they, they uh, appreciated that they could harness the opportunity provided by such financial schemes to cover the and improve the lot of the poor, as this would provide financial access for health coverage to the poor and, and thereby promote equity in healthcare. Now, there is also a study from Uganda that showed the utilization, how utilization of the health center was uh, um, highlighted inequities. They referred to this system as bypassing. It meant that the population, rather than utilize the nearest health facility for their needs, for their obstetric needs, went further to where they could get affordable health and quality health. So these results suggested inequalities in for better quality care and had implications for Uganda's policy on maternal and newborn health outcomes. And they had to use this information to address and reposition issues to enable women access healthcare for delivery 
at their nearest health centers. Because in traveling far, anything could happen and, be, uh, and give rise to poor outcomes. So this finding informs policy. And let us look again at how policy regarding infant and young child feeding has been impacted. This study from Asia looked at early essential newborn care and breastfeeding outcomes. Already we know that immediate skin to skin contact between mother and baby after birth is associated with increased rates of exclusive breastfeeding. But what we did not know was the optimal timing and duration of these skin to skin contacts after birth. This study has identified that the optimal duration is 90 minutes and has gone ahead to show that the rate of exclusive breastfeeding has also been impacted by this duration of skin to skin contact at delivery between mother and baby. So in conclusion, it is obvious that information communication and data management drives provision of policy healthcare at all times and at all places. Therefore, to achieve universal access to quality healthcare and obtain positive health outcomes, it is imperative to apply evidence-based information to improve quality care. And by improving quality care, we are also going to strengthen our health systems. Data generation and guidance an imperative that we must address is a difficult thing in most of our uh, institutions. Health information system must be strengthened to provide the needed support for data management. I thank you all for listening. Here are my references. There are a lot more, but we just cited a few of them. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much, Professor Kolo. Thank you. Participants, we promised we are delivering. Thank you so much, Prof. Please, a round of applause, virtual applause, wherever you are for Professor Kolo. She's told us so much and giving us a conclusion. Information, communication, improved quality care, data management and, and, and gathering, so much. We have panelists who are going to help to um, break it down for us more, to help us understand better and to help us see that, yes, we really understand what is being said today. Professor Kola is going to also be here. She's not going away, and she's going to take questions. We have questions coming up in another um, 30 minutes. So please sit back. You can write your questions on the chat. You can write your questions on the chat or write your questions on the Q&A. And then we'll share. Or you can signify by raising your hands when the um, question and answer session starts, which will be in about 30 minutes from now. So sit back. Our next speaker is Dr. Professor Christina Campbell. Um, just hold on. Let me share my screen so that you can see who we are talking about. And end your slide, Ma. Can I share my screen? Just one minute, please. Okay. I have to do it again. Just hold on. 
we're doing technology. It's not very easy, but we're getting there. We're doing it. Um, I want to share my screen. Yes, on Zoom. So share screen. Pick Professor Campbell, and then share. It's sharing a different thing, isn't it? Okay, I'll try again. Stop this. Stop sharing this. Um, share. This is the one I want to share. Can you see it? Professor Kolo, are you seeing Professor Campbell on the screen? Yes, I can see her. All right, so our next speaker is Professor Christina Campbell. She is the pan, um, one of the panelists is going to tell us more about what Professor Kolo has said and then put it in a way that we can understand more, put it in a way that as individuals, we can, we can say what we can do. We can see how we can strengthen our health systems as well. Professor Christina Campbell is a retired family physician from the College of Medicine, University of Lagos. She has special interest in health systems, health policy, health planning, and management. She's a fellow of the West African College of Physicians, 1992, and an examiner of the West African College of Physicians. She's a World Health Organization fellow, a fellow of the Institute of Management Consultants. Her passion is on qualitative healthcare delivery services and health insurance. She's the past national president of the Medical Women's Association of Nigeria and a member of the scientific committee of the Medical Women International Association. She is an Irene Igodaro Award winner and trained in Russia. She has a Master's of Arts from the University of Leeds, England, and a postgraduate diploma in education from the University of Lagos. She also has a diploma in computer science from the University of Lagos and a certificate on information processing computer technology in the University of Lagos. She's married with children and grandchildren. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me to welcome Pr Professor Christina Campbell, Princess Christina Campbell. Ma, you can share your screen now. And then um, if you are not muted, let me unmute you so that you can talk to us. Welcome, Ma. One minute, I think she's still on mute. Okay, please share. Mark Campbell, can you, can you talk to us? I can't see her audio, I'm only seeing her video. Mao Kolo, can you hear her? Please, let's give her a minute. Um, I can see her audio. Um, her audio is blank, so there's something the matter with her audio, but her video is there, so she's still in, with us. Let's just give her a minute to, to get it across. Mark Campbell, can you hear us? Stop sharing first your own screen, then she can share her own. Okay, ma. Thank you, Professor Abdio. You can take one minute and stretch your legs. Please don't leave the Zoom. Just stand up, stretch. Can you see me? I'm stretching now. So you should do the same.
I, I think we have network challenges at Professor Campbell's end. I'm trying to reach her. She's on our Zoom. But her audio is not showing. Mao Tolori, if you are there, can you please unmute and... Um, Oh yeah, go and keep it. You know what I mean? Go and keep it. Do you want me to do my own now? Hello. Ah, she's saying you can come on now. Yes, I can come on now. Yeah. Okay. okay. She has just called me. She had internet challenges. She's rejoining. So please just um, let, let's give her a minute or two, please. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. She'll join us soon. Mao you're going to be speaking next after Professor Campbell. Okay. Get ready, Ma. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ma. Mark Campbell is still showing, but without audio. Um, two more minutes, please. If not, uh, please, my autonomy, be on standby. I need, need to call you in another two minutes if she, if she can get in. Please, Mark. Mark Campbell, join with audio. Sorry about that. <laughs> Just one of those things. You're welcome, Mark. Please go ahead. I have seen my video. I mean, my presentation. I've shared it. I've not seen your screen yet, Mark. Yeah. Uh -uh. Okay. Click on share. Uh yes, we're seeing it now. Oh, okay. Thank you, ma. Okay, we are seeing it now. Sorry. Yes, yeah, sorry for the you know technical problem. I'm very, very sorry. 
<laughs> ah, at last, we all know our theme, our topic, which our erudite professor had given, which is very, very good. And um, my own topic oh, is what <laughs> we as individuals. Are you hearing me? Yes, my loud. Are you hearing me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. What we as individuals can do. So I'm saying that the growing mismatch, there is a growing mismatch between the low performance of health system and uh, societal um, expectation is rising. And therefore, it becomes very, very important to prioritize and reprioritize efforts towards health system strengthening moving towards universal coverage is imperative. We must do that. We see COVID-19 and it has shown a lot of gaps in the health system. So we really need to strengthen the health system. And information is key here. We need accurate, recent, adequate information you know, to be able to do that, to plan, you know, to manage, to formulate policies and so forth. But it's interesting what Fignale's law says, that the information we have is not what we want and that which we want is not what we get. The information we get is not what we need. And the one we need costs a bit more than we would want to pay or we, we can pay for. My key points here, we are looking at the need for dialogue because the health system cannot sit on its own among just doctors. Within the health system, we have so many stakeholders and we need to dialogue with them in order to have consensus. Once there is an agreement, an implication, an implementation becomes very, very easy. But I mean, this stands to reason with the first step of the planning system. The first step of the planning system says that at the very beginning, the inception of the planning meeting, every stakeholders, those who are going to do the formulation, those who are going to implement, those who are going to receive the services, they all are, you know, to be part of that first meeting so that we can have perception of everybody and we come to a consensus to implement. Thereby, we'll be able to achieve the goal of the health system, that is to give qualitative care to our clients and make them become satisfied and give them better health. We need quality care because without quality care, then diseases will just be recurrent and our clients will not be satisfied and they will not have their full health potentials. As I said, information is key, it was reiterated, so I'm not going to flog that. The need for dialogue. It is a well known, it's well known that national health policies, strategies, plans extend beyond the healthcare that is doctors and nurses giving health um, care to the patients. It goes beyond that. It covers a broad public health agenda, including disaster preparedness. You know, there's a lot of floods now. Are were we prepared? No. Risk management and the international regulations. We've had Ebola and now it's COVID-19. Encompassing action on health, on social health determinants and interaction between health sector and other health sectors in the society. We must come together because a tree cannot make a forest. We must work together in unity. The Bible says, can one agree? Can we agree if we're, you know, if, if we're not united? 
that the house that is divided among itself, you know, cannot stand. And strengthening health system, we want it to stand. So we really go, have to go back to the Holy Bible, working in unity, working in love, working together, accept one another. That is the key. That is the key. We are the leaders, doctors are the leaders of the healthcare delivery system. I will ask this question. Have we led very well? Where are we leading from? On the back or from the front? It's not a question I'm going to answer. We ourselves can answer. We need to encourage inclusivity in all we do at all levels, embracing, accepting, recognizing, appreciating all stakeholders, all stakeholders. Because if one section or one group or one sector, like we now have the strike, definitely there is going to be a chaos. We need to appreciate, we need to come together, work as a team, while we, the doctors of the healthcare system, you know, would lead. A solid evidence information societal dialogue is the best. That was reiterated in Addisa agenda, Addis Ababa 2015 agenda. And it's perhaps the only real way to achieve genuine peace and unity. Quality is the key. We all know that our professional acumen does not automatically translate to quality care. So the need for all of us, be you a doctor, a dentist, a nurse, a pharmacist, etc., all the stakeholders, we must have health management skills and techniques, which I'm going to deal with. Our attitude also matters. It goes a long, long way. We have to put on a positive attitude as leaders of the team. We need to be emp empathetic, not only among ourselves, but even to our clients, our patients, sympathize with them. We need to show respect for one another. And for the health system or the doctors as we, as health professionals, should be respected. It's not something you demand, it's something you, you work for. For example, at our place of work, what time do we go to work? What time do we close? Do we leave the house officer and the residents to do the clacking whilst we are still, you know, trudging and running before we come to our consultation room? The answer depends. And if the answer is positive, then you know, you get the respect. You don't deserve it, you earn that respect. So in strengthening the health system, we should put up a positive attitude, attitude that would earn respect for the profession. We have to have concern for others, concern of, for the stakeholders, other people we are working with, their payrolls and other things. For us to do our things in isolation without taking into consideration the other stakeholders is going to be a discernment. And that's what we don't need, we don't want. We want to work in unity, we want to work in peace. You know, they say, if the elephants, um, when, when two elephants quarrel, the grass suffers. And the grass is our patients, our clients, even our hospital. But when we work together, we are not fighting. Everything goes, you know, the way it's supposed to go. And we need to appreciate one another. The fingers are not equal. We do have different, different types of stakeholders in the profession. 
So we appreciate no matter what, even the cleaner. Because imagine coming to your hospital or to your clinic or your office and it's untidy, it's dirty, just because the cleaner is ill or is not there or is not ready to work. We need to appreciate them because without them, we can't do everything. We have to appreciate, no matter how little we do or they give, we need to appreciate them. At home as well, if you have your children, you don't appreciate them, what happens? The one who you don't appreciate will be resentful and will not put on a good behavior. So it's the same thing. Now we talk about leadership skills, which Professor Okolo had talked about a lot, so I'm not really going to talk much, but I want to touch on delegation. As healthcare professionals, as doctors, we should know how to delegate. When we delegate, we give functions, we give responsibility to a lower officer, but not just only to a lower officer, but somebody you know can do the job very, very well. For example, now, if I was to be in the position of Professor Rosemary, oh, there was no way I would have been able, you know, to do anything with my health condition. So you have to give. So I say kudos to our national president who really handing this position to Rosemary Ogu. And you can see, I mean, she has really performed and we give a clapping you know, offering to her. Supervision, we must supervise. Supervision is not just giving instruction, do this, do that. No, it's an educational process whereby you develop, you train your younger ones so that when you leave, they become like you. But may I ask, are you always there to supervise? Supervision and educational pro um, process, meaning that we train them, we even give them books to read or refer them to places where they can read and become better. Of course, integration will not be flawed because we need to integrate and work together. And uh, in integration of services, we're reducing the patient's time because the patient can come in and get immunization for the child, can have her BP seen by the, seen by the Uh, collect any services he wants. Communication is key as we We need to coordinate all the works from the different angles, from different sectors. Coordination is key. Collaboration, we cannot just overemphasize that. The management techniques. As workers, we should try to motivate. If we cannot motivate, we should try to get that motivation skill. Because when you motivate your workers, you get the best from them. And we get the best outcome for a better output. Problem solving. We should be able to solve the problem. Right now, there is a very big strike on in the country. As doctors, we should be initiators, you know, even up to to the federal government, you know, so that we can also be involved. And we use wisdom, you know, to, you know, to solve, to intervene. Monitoring and evaluation will tell us how well and how badly we are, do we, we are doing so that we can plan. Monitoring, of course, is an ongoing process as we are giving the services. That's why we do have meetings, monthly meetings, um, debt meetings, and so forth and so on in the hospital. The need for information. I want to take health systems research, which is relatively new, a young discipline in the health sector for quality care. 
I would encourage us to go into health system research. It's a multidisciplinary approach. It looks at the quality of care. It looks at decision making, even healthcare financing. You know, those are areas one can research and that information should not just stay with us. That information is not just for our promotion that we become professors, but that, that information will be disseminated to all the relevant stakeholders up to the federal government so that they will be able to articulate, they will be able to formulate, formulate a, an evidence-based you know, um, policy which, can, which should be implemented. We need to engage in a collaborative research because when the collaborative research is going to help because we will look at all spheres, it will be holistic information will be given to the government for health policies. There are different areas we can see, social factors, health policy, we can go to health financing, the organizational structure and processes, medical technology, that's what we are grappling with now. I remember when I just came from Leeds, I started with medical technology. In fact, when I did, um, when I did computer, my, my project was on artificial intelligence, the importance of diagnosing acute abdomen in the absence of a doctor. But unfortunately, when I came, of course, we didn't know that. I, when I was invited to the college, I printed my paper, you know, it was rejected. And uh, you don't blame them because they'd be wondering what is this lady talking about? But thank God we're back here. You know, technology is the key now. Access is the key. Medical technology and personal behavior with effects, which affects the factor of access to healthcare, the quality and, and cost of care, the quantity and quality of life. All those are involved when we, we, we can use, you know, health technology to do our research. Health characteristic of health systems research. We should know that it's only priority problem. We just don't take anything and do. It has to be priority problem. For example, now, with the healthcare problem concerning staff, you know, we are facing with the strike, the present strike today. One can, you know, do a research to find out and evidence-based, you know, information would go a long way to help solving that problem. It should be action-led or oriented that aimed at developing solutions. It uses an integrated multidisciplinary approach, having inputs from many disciplines, many disciplines because the health sector as many sectors, other sectors. We are not working in isolation. We work with other sectors. So we can also collaborate a collaborative research with environment, with other sectors, depending on um, your interests. And it should be participatory to involve the relevant stakeholders. In conclusion, the growing calls for strengthening health system as a means towards achieving universal health coverage is up. Health systems exist in, to improve the quality of healthcare services, which is our goal. The time for a renewed focus and strengthening of the health system, a health se sector capacity is now. 
we as leaders of the health team should contribute immensely in developing robust, efficient, evidence-based national health policies, strategies, and plans that respond that can respond to growing calls for strengthening health system as a means towards achieving universal coverage. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Professor Princess Christina Campbell. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you can see, you can see. Thank you so much, Ma. Um, I, I, without further ado, I think we should go, go to the next speaker so that we can have some time for question and answers. Please put down your questions on the chat box or in the question and answer session, and then we'll go on. Ma, please end your screen. End your slideshow. I've ended our, it. Our, our next speaker okay. is... Our next speaker is... Our own dear president-elect, our incoming Dr. Adekemi Otolori. I think I'm still seeing your Thank screen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, You're still seeing? Yes. Wow. I want to share. I want to share my screen. Okay, ma. the meeting. Let me rejoin because, you know, I've downloaded it. Let me rejoin the meeting again. I have problem okay, with this. Ma. I have okay, problem. Ma. You still see Professor please. Are you, are you still you can, yes. I can share now. Okay. Professor Tolori, give me one minute and then you okay. share your screen. Um, Professor Tolori is Oh my gosh. I'm Dr. Toloni, please. <laughs> Dr. Tolori is a chief consultant radiologist and permanent secretary in the Ohio State Civil Service. She graduated from the College of Medicine, University of Lagos in 1974. We can't screen on. You're not we seeing the screen. You can't see the screen. I think it's Professor it. Campbell has to at all. I'm sharing my screen. And it's showing here that my screen is sharing. Uh, it's only okay. your screen I'm seeing. No, we are not seeing your screen, Rosemary. We're still seeing Dr. Campbell's screen. Okay, Dr. Campbell, please stop screen sharing. But so on this end, it's showing my screen is on. Okay, no problem. It's okay. Is it, what what can you see now? More for what can you see? Professor Campbell's screen. Still seeing. You're still, you still seeing my screen. Okay. Okay, we are seeing Rosemary. Okay, ma. We are now seeing Dr. Tolori's screen. Yes. Thank you. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, thank you. So um, Dr. Lilian Adekemi Tolori is a chief consultant radiologist and permanent secretary in the Ohio State Civil Service. She graduated from the College of Medicine, University of Lagos in 1974. She had her postgraduate training in medical radio diagnosis from the University of Liverpool in 1980. She's also a fellow of the Medical College of Radiologists of Nigeria and the West African College of Surgeons. She has worked successfully in several capacities under the Oyo State Government, rising to the position of permanent secretary and rotating through four ministries, establishment, training and pensions, commerce, industry and cooperatives, civil service, and women's commission on social welfare. She belongs to many professional associations and was elected in September 2019 as the national president-elect of the Medical Women's Association of Nigeria. She's happily married with children. 
Professor Talaran is going to talk to us as medical women, what we can do to strengthen health systems and how we can help ourselves become part of the process of what makes things work. Dr. Talaran, please. Thank you very much. The chairman, the National President's Medical Women's Association, Dr. Mini Oseji, and the House. I thank the scientific session. I thank the scientific technical group, Professor Rosemary Ogu and Dr. Ma Wakocha for the opportunity and the privilege. Also, I would like to congratulate Professor Folu for the brilliant presentation, throwing light on the subject matter over which we now build. I also salute my teacher, my friend, Professor Campbell. Now, strengthening health systems through health data management and social mobilization. You can remember that WHO has six health building blocks. We have been reminded by Professor Okolo, they are leadership and governance, healthcare financing, health workforce, medical products and technologies, information and research, and service delivery. Under information and research, we have health management, health data management. In Nigeria, we have a three-tier health system, primary, secondary, tertiary and we have referrals from primary to the tertiary, but funding is inversely related to the health needs of the population. Unfortunately, the most health burdened people are the least funded. Now, now to the subject matter, health information systems, HIS. The health information system provides the basis for decision making and has four key functions. Data generation, compilation, analysis and synthesis, communication and use. The HIS collects data from health and other relevant sectors, analyzes the data and ensures their overall quality, relevance, timeliness, and convert the data into information for health decision making. Now, what can M1 do? I'm sure you are aware that we are already doing some under the able leadership of Dr. Seji. M1 members can be, I see the potential role of M1 members in being trainers, facilitate trainings on record keeping, reporting, and use of decision making. Now, when we say trainers, these are highly needed because we know that all our record monitoring people, the nurses, the midwives, they need to be taught. They need training and retraining to do the things right. In Nigeria, most of our problems is that we don't do things well. Again, we can give supportive supervisors, conduct internal and external support supervision within our technical areas. For instance, I'm a radiologist. I can check the register. Are the forms well filled in radiology? We need, we need the officers, the, the record officers to put in the age, the name, the sex, and the part of the body. Under where you put just adults, it's difficult to go back and say you are doing research for certain age groups. So things must be done properly. And again, as supervisors, we are now moving from the age of um, fault finding supervisors, which we used to have in the old, to supportive supervisors. That is on the spot, you assess the data that they have, you correct, you suggest, you monitor. And you give your report right there, as opposed to the old traditional supervisors who are feared when they are coming and who, fall, who are fault finding with the result that 
the people on ground, they don't like them to come for supervision. But the new supportive supervisors are always welcome and they make new changes for progress. Data quality assessors, periodic checking, conduct periodic data quality assessment, like Professor Ogu. Every three, three months, she can check whether what has been uploaded is the same as what you have in the register. This is very essential for decision making. Now, I would like to share some questions, sample questions to pose during assessment. Data generation. Is the health facility, facility using up-to-date HMIS tools to e.g. the record forms, the registers? You know that the Department of uh, Planning, Research and Statistics, they update the registers every three to five years. The officers that handle these registers have to be taught. They have to be shown the import of the new register as opposed to the old register. If not, they continue to go the old way and the information are now not as we want it. Are printed copies available at service delivery points? No. Most times the printed copies are not enough or they may be in the store. They may not be at the right place. So getting data from such area is a difficult thing and it gives us the wrong data. Now, training of the staff on how to complete the tools is very important. And medical women can assist in these simple but very important tasks. Tag data compilation. Are data being compiled correctly and completely? What do we mean by this? Now, correctly, for instance, if we say we want the number of stillborn babies, the nurses or the midwives may have different interpretations. We have to enlighten them. Stillborns are babies born without any form of life in them. Perinatal birth is, um, perinatal death is babies born, uh, babies who die within maybe the first seven days of delivery and neonatal within the 28 days of delivery. So these facts have to be communicated to the midwives and the nurses so that they can fill the forms and we can get the actual values. Then what do we mean by completely? For instance, if I want to do a survey fracture in five-year-olds and I get to the x-ray department and they feel the sex, the age, and the part of the body, the name, but if they don't feel the age for all of them, if I want to take a survey of 100 children, five-year-olds, that means I cannot do the study. And that is why we say data must be completely filled. Are the data tools, tools being stored properly? We are sometimes guilty of this. Many of the registers or the case notes, they are in the offices for research purposes. Many are in different lockers in the record system. So we have to see that things are being done properly. Are we able to capture private practice, you know, private health facility data? This is a big gap. And medical women can play a vital role. Some of us are in private practice. They should know and they should be aware that they are responsible to fill all these forms and upload them so that there can be a national data management. And we can take the cue from here that after this, Professor Ogu will take the lead. Are the plans, are there plans for electronic record keeping? The world is now digital. Please, Nigeria must not be left behind. We must be seen to do things properly. Analysis and synthesis. Uh, HMIS monthly summary forms being completed correctly, medical women can assist. Do supervisors conduct periodic 
periodic data quality assessment to avoid garbage in, garbage out phenomenon. These are all loopholes. Are the data being validated before being uploaded to the DHIS2, which is Nigeria's data website? All of us can have an input. Are the data regularly analyzed and interpreted? Uh, this period of pandemic has exposed Nigeria and it has always also served to assist us in assessing ourselves and improving. How is data turned into information? Do reporting health facilities get a feedback? This is highly essential for it is motivating. If they know that all the data entry they've been doing has a meaning, we can explain it to them. Then they will do better. They will continue in their job. Because you can imagine there are junior staff sitting in their offices, filling forms, putting numbers here and there. They should know the import of their job. So if they have a feedback, they will know that ah, this is an essential tool. Are data used posters available in health facilities for staff to view. We cannot overemphasize the use of data as communication. These posters, we can also use it to teach them the import of the figures that are on the posters, the import of what we are trying to say, the import of what we want the government to do. Are the analyzed data items used for decision making? Is there a need for quality improvement? This is the work of medical women in whichever position we are. I would now like to move to the other subject matter, social mobilization. What is social mobilization? Social mobilization is a process for motivating communities to organize themselves in a cohesive group for for an active participation towards their own development. Please, I want you to mark the word. Move the communities into a cohesive group for active participation for their own development. Now, we have various groups, governments, civil society, media, development partners, like WHO, UNICEF, the State World Bank, to mention a few, community leaders, research and academic institutions. The goal is to bring together all societal and personal influences to raise awareness of and demand for health care. Medical women is a part of this. From the foregoing, we can see that there are unspoken gaps, unseen gaps in some areas. I see M1 taking a role in social mobilization. They should take a stand of no missed opportunities approach. And I know Dr. Seji is like that. Be the voice of the people at every opportunity in decision making through membership of technical working groups, task forces, watch development. Again, I would like to appreciate our members who are on the task force for the COVID-19. They have been recognized in some states like Lagos and Abia. We all have to be part of the system. We have to act as advocates or champions to promote essential health services in community engagements. We have to promote formation of facility community health committees to meet regularly, like monthly, to discuss community needs, receive community feedback on the quality of services, share achievements, and work together on infrastructural improvement projects. I see this in our adopted facility projects. If we can move on to the next stage in the adopted facility, we will achieve this goal. We need to work with the communities to educate them on prevention and detection of disease. The various disease patterns, communicable and non-communicable with our various posters and outreaches, 
they will soon know more. We have to support the government at all levels, including the first ladies, to celebrate important days. You know, important national days with a focus on women's health. Let me uh, let me raise the awareness that celebration days are not jamborees. Some see it as jamborees. They are awareness tools, enlightenment, education, and education is power. So we need to partake in this, and the people are enlightened, and they raise questions, and they join us in the community work. We have to volunteer for community engagement programs or medical missions. Thank God for medical missions, medical women, and also the enemy. We have outreaches. You know, the ophthalmologists do their own yearly in some communities. The West African College of Surgeons, they go out to do hanyography and all sorts in some groups. We should continue because they need us. And if we remember the motto, the vision, and the mission of M1, we will know that this is our call. Our founding mothers found the need to assist government. They knew that government cannot do it alone. So they served with a free heart, and now we have to continue the race. Prepare, we have to prepare ourselves for leadership and seek leadership positions as, as to be able to be at the table when decisions affecting women's health are being taken. This is the time for M1 to be impactful. Let us be seen, let us be visible, and I know Nigeria will get it one day. In conclusion, Nigeria operates a three-tier system, starting with the primary health center being provided for by the local government, through the secondary health care provided for by the state, and the tertiary care provided for by the federal government. Nigeria government cannot do it alone. Nigeria needs M1. I believe this is the time. Regrettably, healthcare funding remains grossly inadequate. The 7% being funded by the foreign bodies are the important ones, immunization, malaria, HIV AIDS, now COVID-19. We have to do something. Most patients, most sick people are funded by themselves. We have to do something. The health management information system requires more as well as capacity building at all levels of health system for optimal performance. Such assistance could be in the areas of data generation, which Professor Okolo, Dr. Campbell, and my humble self have analyzed, data compilation, data analysis and synthesis, and communication and use for decision making. Communities must be fully engaged. We have to educate them. Knowledge is power. We need to engage them for active participation in the improvement of their own health. Again, this is the time. It is never too late. This is the time. All hands have to be on deck. Nigeria must learn to collect data properly, analyze data properly for decision making. And data is part of life. In every sphere of life, without data, there is no meaningful improvement or progress. I thank you all for listening. Thank you so much, Ma. Thank you. A big round of applause for our president-elect, Mao Tolori. She has said it. Data is life. We can do more. We can do more. At this juncture, please, let me welcome our one and only, our dear chair, of the Technical and Legislative Working Group, Ma, Ma Wokocha, MNI. Ma Wokocha, I know we dragged you out from your bed. It's about 5 a.m., 6 a.m. where you are now. Are you here? Um, can you hear me, Ma? Can you please unmute yourself and speak to the house? Ma is the one who has put this whole thing together. I see many people writing, well done, Professor Ogu, well done, Professor Ogu. You're seeing Professor Ogu, but Professor Ogu has a big backbone, a strong backbone before her. And that backbone is Ma, Dr. Ma Wokocha, MNI. Ma Wokocha, please talk to us. Thank you, Ma. 
Good morning, wonderful, beloved sisters of mine. I am glad to be able to wake up. And I am so sorry I joined a bit late. Uh, I was on a Zoom call, Rosemary Knows My Program. I am, uh, I'd let me not go into it. So I haven't gotten up to two proper hours of sleep. But I promised her that no matter how stressful, because it's been a stressful period based on what I'm doing, but I told her I'll join this group today. And I'm glad you all responded. I want to graciously, humbly thank our presenters. I mean, who can, who can ever think that women are incapable? Oh no, on the contrary. And that's why I'm praying for more opportunity for our women from every you know, facet and sphere of life to be given opportunity to lead, to lead so that Nigeria and indeed the world could do better. I just want to appreciate you all. Rosemary, you are saying you are not the one. Yes, you are. A mother who has not produced a good child has not fared well. I am glad that M1 is on the rise. It's not about me, it's about M1. It's about what we turn over with each biannual leadership. And I encourage this sisterhood in us and the transfer of the wealth of knowledge each and every one of us possess to be continuous so that we can make greater impact to the society called Nigeria and to humanity in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Ma. We still have um, some time, not too much, for question and answer. Ma, please, you would um, anchor that for us. Do we have questions? Ma, Wokocha, you are in charge. I'm sorry, I'm not so dressed. That's why I muted the video. Please pardon me. I'm in my sleep scrub. <laughs> Um, as many as is able to join, I am so grateful. And you've listened to our wonderful, wonderful mothers, sisters, past presidents. We looked at the team in question and, and thought about what we have, what we are blessed with as M1. And so we went ahead to ask Professor Okolo, who did not hesitate in, you know, obliging us uh, you know, to bring about this presentation and the, uh, Dr. Campbell, whom I knew, Prof, you know, I know you are passionate about this and I'm glad we are able to bring you back again, Dr. Tolorin. So please, as many as have joined us, we want anyone who has listened attentively because there's so much they have said. If you have any question, please throw it to them and I was trying to chat with Rosemary saying, ah, hey, how are you? <laughs> Please ask us your question, ask them your question. Let us migrate from theory through your questions to practice and see how we can mold the two of them. That's what I was chatting and make this a tool for us to impact the people. Please question, the floor is open. Thank you very much, Ma. I don't see any hands up. While we are waiting to take questions, um, Publicity Secretary Ma, Vivian, and National Secretary, please coordinate the pictures. We're soon rounding up. I see some hands up, Ma. Should I, should I give them audience? Yes, yes, I, I can see two hands uh, up. Please speak. Patricia Ejikem is about to speak. Dr. Patricia, you raised your hand. Are you able to speak? I've asked her to unmute herself so she can speak. Yes. Unmute yourself. Uh, 
I think she IG came. Are you still there? She is. Okay. She's muted still. I can see her. I've asked her to unmute. Ma, you can also ask her to unmute. Why we're waiting for Patricia? Is okay. Hello, 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 Ma. Hello, Ma. Uh, no, no, no. I can see you. It was a mistake. Sorry. Okay. okay All right. Dr. Sarah Titiola Ibiemi. Good morning, Ma. This morning. is uh, Dr. Ibiemi. Yes. Yes, Ma. M1 Ogun. Oh, we're already in the afternoon. I'm sorry. Good afternoon, Ma. Well done, all our uh, presenters, for the beautiful lectures, our mothers. Uh, it's been really great since morning when we started. I'm really enriched and I'm really, I've learned a lot from what we have had today. Mine will be both like a question and a comment. I want to find out because what I know is we are not lacking data. I, there, there was a law or a rule that uh, Professor Campbell mentioned about mm -hmm. um, data, about information that at times it is not what you need that you get and all stuff like that. So we may have data and maybe that's not the data we need. But what I want to find out is how M1 as a group can actually facilitate the use of this data. I love what the president said that talk is cheap. We should move from the level of talking to actually making sure that these things are used to make sure we have a better health system in our country. Because all through our lives, right from undergraduate level, when you do community medicine or community dentistry, you gather data. When I, I was doing my MPH, they say, how will you disseminate the data? Why will you be used? You say you submit one copy at the, um, in the library, will be used in the local government, will be used in the state level. All over, all of us keep writing papers, getting real data, getting real stuff about the true conditions in Nigeria. But you find out that it doesn't go beyond the theoretical level. How are we as M1 going to make sure, I know the president and the, uh, uh, the end, uh, national president Council, they are doing a great work because right from the time they started, data must be used. It must be used. Thank you very much. Yes, Dr. Tolorin, I think she is. Uh, she has posed the question to you. Yes, and that is our greatest problem. I was trying to chat when I was told to begin to speak, and I stopped. This is it: from theory to practice, and effective implementation. How is it possible? How yes. can anyone help? Are we waiting for all the questions or do I go ahead? I think you can go ahead. Yes, thank you very much. How can we use data? We have medical women in all cadres, from professor down to the house officer and water finds its level. We know that with the very senior ones, they know how to get across to government. From our findings, from our findings, we can get in touch with our matrons, our grand matron, yes. to them for right information about. <laughs> Doctor Dick, please, um, Doctor Dick, mute yourself. Thank you. Okay. Go ahead, uh, Dr. Lauren. We can communicate through the very high ups, our minister, our minister for women affairs, the women, the wives of the governors, the wife of the president, about urgent need of the communication we need to pass across. And this is very relevant. We need to analyze, educate them, interpret, 
and use it for quality improvement. And as I told you earlier, it starts from the beginning. Medical women, we can re-entrench ourselves to teach the basic staff on proper data generation. We must avoid this garbage in, garbage out. If you know the impression they have about data collecting people, they say hey, those people that sit under the tree and just fill in whatever, that era is past. We should assist them to know the import of proper data collection, data compilation, analysis and synthesis and communication. We have to be at the various levels. We cannot just say we have taught them how to fill the data or the meaning of all the icons. No, we have to go beyond and everybody must know their strength. If I have connection with the Minister of Health, if he will listen easily and attentively and take action, I can go. If it is the Minister of, Minister of Power, but we must do something. We cannot say because they didn't listen last year, we will not perform this year. Look at the Ebola. Ebola has exposed the inadequacies of our medical infrastructure. Are we going to stay there? No, we have to start from somewhere. And I thank God for the technical group that are giving us the records every night. For instance, the officer in my, in my state, Dr. Lushola Taiwo, the M1 president, she's the last to sleep because every night she posts the findings. The same thing for Dr. Wa to maybe for national, we commend the efforts. So we have to continue. We cannot rely on what we used to have before. This is a new era. We have to start now. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, someone else was raising their uh, finger. I don't want to comment because exactly what she's saying is the, the way to go. Um, but it will go beyond M1 and it will go beyond um, personal contact, we need a total societal change, you know, because Nigerian government and governance is mm, blessing, most of them, I don't say every, blessing the uh, square hole and um, getting a round peg and it will not fit. That's where the problem is. So until we are able, and I think one of the ways would be at the end of the day, I'll let us know what I'm thinking, and I think it should be the way. Pique, please, Pique, please. Dr. DK, you were trying to speak to us. I'm trying to harness what has been said. Please go ahead, unmute yourself, and give us your thought lines or your question. My hand, they up, Dumebi Owa. OK, Dr. Dumebi Owa is trying to inject more color into what has been said. Dr. Owa, you have the floor, please. Thank you very much. Oh. My elders, my sisters, congratulations to M1 in general. Yes. Um, it's not only telecommunication companies that value data. In medical practice, data is life. In every aspect of the life, data is life. But I found out that in medical practice, we are not serious about keeping data or making data. We tend to rely on foreign countries for data. Mm -hmm. It's very, very wrong. You want data on so many health issues. We look, looking forward to America, to UK, and what have you. It's very wrong. Please, charity begins at home. Let us start in our local areas, in local hospitals, in collating data. Telling the younger ones, showing them the importance of data. If we start from the local level, it will cascade up to the uh, national level. Data is very important. And I, I, I will thank uh, Dr. Tolori. I didn't know that people were noticing what I was doing. Nobody appointed me. I decided to do it on my, by myself. Every night, I send out NCDC information to over 20 platforms. And I didn't know people were noticing it. Thank you for the observation. 
So please, let us be very data conscious. And some of us are in good positions of authority. Let us emphasize and see how we can link up with the people who call the shots in various levels. But if we start from our local areas, cash, if you are a consultant or a senior doctor or whatever, you show the young ones the importance, the examples, they will, they will follow through. But it's like Nigeria, most hospitals, people don't even think that it's important. It's like clacking. You see doctors doing one, one line of clacking. I hate it to my, to my marrow. So if we show good example, I think the younger ones will follow. Please, we need this data in every area of our life. M1, please have data. Oh, all M1 states, please collect data. Please, because even if you leave the shores of Nigeria, like many are wanting to, you will still need information from here. If you didn't get the data, well, there's nothing to give to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Owa. Um, you think nobody noticed what you were doing? People did notice. So, uh, I have a comment. I'm, I'm sorry. I also have, I have a comment to make, Okolo. Ma'am, you have the floor. As a follow-up to what Dr. Owa has just said, I have a comment and uh, a question. Can the lower Keda be mentored? What do I mean by that? The primary healthcare workers. Can they be mentored to gather accurate information? Like, so, like uh, uh, Dr. Wokosha has said, the days of gathering of information under the tree is over. But it won't be over unless there's some mentorship going on at the points where information should be gathered. And the only way to get out of that quagmire is to show them how they, that information they gather can be useful and improve outcomes in what they are doing. We may think they will not understand, but we can mentor them to put together whatever is needed to be done for patients in, a, in an intelligible manner that they can understand and we also can understand and make use of. That's what I wanted to contribute. No one can engage in a mentorship plan to help improve data at that level. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Um, again, uh, I think uh, most of the problem has been sectional information gathering or knowledge acquisition without processing and transferring it or you know uh, making it implementable a continuous implementable kind of method of life or uh, 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 way of uh, practice we lack that this bridge is lacking as we are all steaming up with this uh, 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 data and uh, uh, coll collation when this era finishes now some other person that will be for another time, maybe during the biennial. M1 has been in existence for more than 40 years. You have been the, the champion of community, enlightenment, even this data thing, but we have not collated, collated and then harnessed our, our data and kind of molded it into a product that can be you know, transferred and utilized. So we must, at the end of uh, all these presentations now, try to harness these things, see what we can do with the brains that have upper knowledge of this, see how we can use it to effectively mentor, because mentorship is not two years mentorship. That's the problem we have. And mentorship is not because I like you, so I want to mentor you. Nigeria has a problem, and when we are talking Nigeria, it's also part of M1 problem. 40 years in existence, 40 years of effective grassroots mobilization and advocacy, enlightenment, but there is no 
uh, uh, you know, effective, uh, 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 effective uh, utilization of the information. That is why we have not come up. This bridge has to be broken, and I'm so excited. That's why Rosemary and I said, okay, let's get this on. Let's kickstart it, and we will not let you all rest because you need you live be you know beyond the governments of the government of the, 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 you live beyond the government of the day but we must have a product that will be transferred that will be presented to whatever government shows up that is when we can have this continuity that will change the mentality of the people that can bring results thank you Next. Man, what was that My hand is up since, ma. Please, ma, go ahead. Oh, mama, go ahead. My hand is also up. Yes, ma. Okay, Don't let me. Uh, 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 yes. Hello, ma. My hand has been up. Please, one after another. Whoever my hand has been up. Oh. I say, please. One after another. Who wants to go? Is it Antonia who wants? After Antonia will be DK. Uh, uh, Doctor. Doctor Dogbola. Okay, please start. Okay, thank as, you, ma'am. As, as national president, too, her hand is up. She, okay, ma, 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 my president will speak later. I want her. I, <laughs> I know she will speak definitely. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, I want to congratulate everyone and I want to thank all our presenters. Uh, one of the problems I observed is that most of the projects that we do, we don't have ethical approval. And that's why the data, sometimes we have difficulty being published. And what is my suggestion is that uh, at the national level, since we have a team for each biennium, I think it would be better to have a scientific committee to write a proposal that is either nationally approved ethically and each state, when they implement such proposal, the data will now have a backing or this ethical backing and can now be collated, analyzed and form a publishable mm -hmm. Uh, article that actually, I mean, also will help in the implementation at whatever level. And that we want to use it for policy, for whatever advocacy, too. And so, as a president, um, uh, for this effort and all of you behind this uh, Zoom meeting, God will really grant you more strength. It's really an, a, a very uh, enlightening program. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ma. Thank you so much, um, Dr. Ebola. Ebola. She has said it all. Please, in uh, because of time, let us continue. I will. Uh, I'm trying to jot down each submission because without ethics, you need ethical approval for anything you want to do. That is true, but we are learning. Thank you so much. Next speaker, please. Next, next contributor. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Dr. Good Mopo Wali. Um, yes. good, good afternoon, Madam National President, Madam. Huh? I'm Dr. Antonia Njoku. Uh, oh. Good afternoon, Madam National President, Madam MP, our past president, our moderators, our, our speakers, um, our medical elders and sisters. Um, a lot of things have been said. But uh, yeah, somebody mentioned that uh, the problem is that we, it's not like we lack data. However, the problem I think that we have with data is even the quality of the data collection. A lot of times, I've recently been involved in um, a program where I had to um, involve in collecting some data. And you realize that a lot of, when you go to the, uh, when you try to collect data from our hospitals, you don't get what you want. Basic things are even documenting, documenting um, time we, uh, of encounter with patients and all that. So I think that M1 can encourage its members, maybe through seminars or through um, workshops, 
in hard data um, uh, quality data because if you don't have most of the times why you can't publish is because it, the the data lacks quality. So I think that is a big basic problem. And of course, the new thing now is the implementation science, implementation research. And I think that with such workshops, M1 members can be um, encouraged to begin to um, think of how to engage in implementation research, which will advance our advocacy. Because you need the numbers, you need the data to be able to advance our advocacy and get all we want. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Njoko, Dr. Njoko Antonia. Next speaker, please. You have heard her, she said, the quality of that uh, data collection, uh, collection is, very, is very key, and I think it's also very key. Any, anybody can add any number or say, I have done this, but what is the quality of it? Is it, is it able to withstand, you know, um, uh, withstand test? That is important. Please, next speaker. Uh, Thank, Bobo, you, uh, Madam 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 Madam. Thank you, Madam Thank you, Dr. Madam. Yeah, Dr. Oh, Mama, you want to speak now? I thought you are, I yes, thought you are, you are I, want to, I want to address some of the uh, response comments. of the uh, comments. Yes, please. Okay. Can I find to... my own before so, you may I, may, may I stand on um, all existing protocol? Thank you. So I want to um, indicate that the adopted health facility Madam President, just a moment, please. Can every other person mute the uh, the uh, uh, speaker, please? It's rowdy. Can every other person mute their speaker when somebody is speaking? So that. Hello, are we all there? <laughs> can we all. Dr. Ophion, can you mute your speaker? Dr. Ophion. Dr. Ophion, can you mute your speaker? Please. Thank you. Madam President, you can now go ahead. Thank you, Ma. I wanted to indicate that the adopted health facilities, we have taken the issue of data very seriously. And we ask for specific data every month in line with our focus on maternal and child health. And then we discovered that there were challenges. And so we decided to organize the CME program during this next meeting on Monday and Tuesday on health data management and social mobilization. So I am responding to what Dr. Onjoko has said, that we mm. need to build capacity. And we have done that. Now our members who attended both physically and virtually, they are, they are now trainers and they are going back, whether it's at a primary, secondary, tertiary level to train, not only in the adopted health facilities, but wherever they are working. And based on this training, we expect that when they collect the data, whether the local government or the state is ready to use the data, they should be ready to publish that data. And please, we have the Journal of the Medical Women's Association of Nigeria, and we can get this information. And that is the type of publication we want, publications that will tell us what is going on and help us to promote the implementation science that Dr. Njoko has talked about. And then uh, Dr. Adebola Dada said that we need ethical approval. And indeed, at the beginning of the biennium, we applied for ethical approval for all our M1 related outreaches. And since this biennium, we have done two. One was during the biennial conference in September, and the second one was in January. And then after the COVID-19 took, took place, we um, had to stop those outreaches. But the problem is that we've not got the response, so we need to follow up. But that proposal, we have circulated it on the platform for the research committee. And we've said, you can still use the proposal while we are waiting for our own at the national level. You can use the proposal at the state level and apply for ethical approval. So that is what we have done so far to ensure that these things are going on. Thank you. Thank you very much. You see the effort that is being put in place. Have you had our president saying that application has been submitted, but she has not gotten a response? But we should not be discouraged. This is the problem I'm, I'm, I was talking about. 
the lack of continuity, the lack of interest in what will make Nigeria a sustainable place. That is the problem, but we will not be discouraged. Thank you, ma'am. So we have to continue to push, even if it does not happen during this year, Tena. Again, that's what I'm trying to submit, the continuity also in M1. Key, key issues, key proposals, key things that will improve life and livelihood that has been, you know, uh, suggested by a, uh, a biennium must not be dropped because the biennium has ended and somebody else has come on. That is also part of our own internal problem, why M1 has not made effective progress in accordance with her efforts and input. Well, Thank you we, are that. We, are, Thank we are overcoming you. that. We are overcoming that. We are overcoming that. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, President. Um, the next person, somebody else, Maureen. Is it Maureen or Dr. Ophion? Who is the next that was willing to inject some sound and flesh into what we are doing? I wanted our president to speak last as the uh, mother of the house. That's why I was trying to let others talk before her because uh, you have the mastery uh, in this. So, but who wants to say something or to appreciate what has been said or to give suggestion of how they are going to carry this mantle of information to the next level? Hey, Maureen. Maureen's hand is up. Maureen's hand, hand has been up. Yes, I, I called her, but I didn't hear anything. I said, Maureen, oh, Dr. Maureen. Sorry, ma. Good afternoon, everybody. How are you? Fine, thank you. You're quite busy in the clinic. Why is that? Yeah. Yeah, because of the ongoing strike. It has been a wonderful day. Few one I was able to join. It has been so wonderful. We've spoken so much about data collection. My just a short comment. Considering every other thing we uh, discussed now, in collecting data, the first thing I feel that is among also the important things for us to consider is the objective for that data collection. Yes. Because another thing that is holding us back is to collect data, collect, collect. At the end, we won't be able to sum it up to where we are going to. So you see us collecting, that we are not unifying it to get our desired objectives. Yeah. So I feel that anytime um, anytime we're planning to, like our able president mentioned advocacy, in that advocacy, we must take one, two, three objectives that we have in mind. So at the end of it, we'll be able to write out something. Why having those objectives? So this is our target and this, this one's our objective. At the end of it, we'll be able to conclude it. As one of us mentioned, the importance of ethical clearance. So in such a situation, provided we have an ethical clearance on that, we can easily send it for publication. And also, for them to get ethical clearance, there are some basic things they must look out for. Our stated objectives, the methods we want to follow for those objectives and how to conclude it. So I still feel that while we are mentioning about data, data, we must have a structured one. That is collecting based on a particular objective and setting our target clear and working towards our target. If not, we'll keep on doing M1 advocacy, M1 this. At the end, we will have the ending of it, the conclusion of it. So I think it's very important for any data we are collecting, let our objectives to be clear. Thank you, um, Dr. Morin. Um, this is true. Nothing is done, you know, vaguely. There must be. There um, I must say again, I can't. Yes, okay, okay. So I can't thank the organizers enough. Actually, M1, we are doing a lot of things. We're on the move. And I'm sure with more planning and setting our objectives clear, we really make a serious mark this time around. Thanks so much. Thank you, uh, Dr. Moran. Like I was uh, trying to say, yes, everything you are doing, even in running your home, even in running your home, you got to have 
some, you know, objective of how you want to run a successful home. So everything done must have an objective and um, how best to achieve that objective without um, uh, uh, bringing some degree of disadvantage or indeed uh, discord in the family. Same with the data collection. Objective, make um, it clear. Um, just one more thing. One more thing, ma. One more thing, ma. Yes, Can I just add one more yes, thing? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, um, somebody also said, all the work we have done, do we have data? Now, we have about six templates for states to report what they have done. We have the general reports, then, which includes the cancer programs, how many cases they've seen and all that. We have the fetal Doppler reports. We have the ultrasound. We have adopted health facilities. The wordy, the wordy will indicate how many flyers you have distributed on social mobilization. So by the grace of God, on Monday when we paid advocacy visits to the Honorable Secretary for Health in FCT to let him know that M1 National Executive Council, they are in town. We gave that in the speech and that speech has been circulated and we indicated, in fact, by the time he heard the, val the, the amount of people we have covered, 30,000 from states have reached out. He was so impressed and he, began, he promised to support M1. So this information that we have had, that's why we circulated the speech. When states are doing their advocacy at the state level, they can still use that data. So all the data, even in the next meeting, it is there on the platform for you to use for advocacy, to let people know what M1 is doing, both in your state and in other states. So we are doing that. Thank you. Um, thank you, Madam President. Again, I come back to what I'm saying. Some of us have been there, both at the federal um, and local levels. The problem of Nigeria, you are doing very well, like other past executives did do well and Went, I mean, went to learn to communicate to government of those days. What I am please encouraging us to buy into, which is new, is this spirit of continuity. This team you have brought in this year, own executive, we go back and look at what other things were brought, put them together and make sure that we, no matter who is sitting next and next and next, that we don't just you know, ride and forget the past. A people without a history do not survive. Nigeria oh, lacks it. We are, yeah. we are doing that, Ma. The strategic yeah. plan not started in uh, Professor Adima's time. I and incidentally, it. we are doing the strategic planning workshop by five o'clock today. Professor Adima is going to be there. Kechi Ogwagu, who, was, who provided technical support. And so we've asked people to review what has been done in the past. Even the JM1, you know, it started in Dr. Esangwedo's time. When yes, we, we activated it, she was the chair. So yes. that continuity, we are struggling to make sure it happens. And mm -hmm. the fact that MPE is a resource person today is also for the continuity because she yes, has been beautifully into the vision. And we are sure when we come to Ibadan 2021, it's going to be smooth sailing by God's grace. Yes, Mama. No, I wasn't even talking to M1 alone. I'm talking to government. Because you said the uh, the FCT uh, minister or the uh, yeah. state uh, appreciated. I'm just telling you the problem of Nigeria, because they will loud you. You know what I'm saying. So we should not be. I'm only encouraging us because these have been yes. done, and even with contacts, you know, to higher higher levels, they will hear us yes. because they have <laughs> never seen even health as as something worthy of you know, investment, but I'm glad that uh, the pandemic has uh, opened their eyes that where they look for their help, that they may not have the opportunity of getting there. So it is better to begin to look inward and listen yes. to, do you understand what I'm saying? That's, uh, that's the area I was trying to, uh, yes, yeah, bless you. Uh, uh, our past president was raising her hand. Um, Dr. Baba, Dr. Baba, you raised okay. Prof, you want to speak? Professor Campbell is yeah. I just want to talk about you know research. We just don't research for the sake of research. Yes, we look at you know problems that are very, very important and relevant let, let, so let that me. we treat 
not just doing yeah. Yes, Madam National President. Madam, uh, Madam uh, uh, Moderator Chair, and Am I speaking? Uh, Professor Campbell was just uh, on. After Professor Campbell, uh, my past president, immediate past president, you will be on. Thank you, ma'am. Professor Campbell, please. What I was trying to say is, you know, yes, what I'm saying is, most of the time we do research just to get a promotion. But really, if you want to make an impact into the society, we look at salient problems okay. that, you know, affect the community, you know, affect the health system at different levels. For example, now, problem of strike. That's a, you know, if anyone, you know, does, goes into that and uh, you take it to the higher level up to Senate, you know, one would be able to make an impact and bring end to such things. It's not just taking any subject because you want to, to do a research, but the research should be relevant and important and would make, you know, um, will give pos pos positive results in terms of the quality of care we're giving. That's what, that's what I'm trying to Right. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, she is trying to encourage us to be sensitive to our environment and base researches <laughs> based on that. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Baba, please, you have the floor. Dr. Joyce Baba, you have the floor. Dr. Baba, unmute yourself. I'm speaking. Can you hear me now? No, you are. Uh, you are. Uh, you, uh, Can you hear me? I have to be unmuted. Somebody. Can somebody please help me? Um, Dr. Rosemary, can you unmute her? She's, I have unmuted myself. You are on, please. I have unmuted. I can network myself. The network must be very bad. Very bad where she is. I think so. Yes. Yes. Because she's just breaking up and very disturbed. She's myself. You can't hear her. You can't hear her. Uh, uh, and she send a chat. Let her send a chat. That's exactly what I wanted to tell her. Past president, can you please chat us? Where you are appears to be poorly, you know. Um, no, you are unmuted. Maybe your net is either weak. Or the signals are not so strong to um, to join the uh, the Zoom. 
We have unmuted you. You are not muted at all. Let me let me chat her to please uh, speak on the chat. We can hear her so that we can make progress. Yes, Madam Moderator, can I have a word? Yes, ma'am, you can while I'm. Rosemary, can you also be trying? I want to chat her. Okay, no, we we'll speak later. We can hear yeah. that. Yeah. No, no, I finished with that now. Yeah. Now I can yeah. yeah. We're supposed to have finished at um, two o'clock. It's two thirty now. We haven't well, finished. With... Yeah. Now, we'll Kocha, please continue. Thank you, ma. <laughs> we will round up, but because it's something very productive, I mean, it's very, very stimulating. So, I pray God will use it. Um, we can't hear the past president, but um. She may as well chat her contribution to the discussion. I think there's a sister here with the red mask who wants to speak. So, okay. Right. Um, the national president. The past presidents that are present. Our wonderful Professor Okul. I don't know what to do. I keep telling people how you bullied me to things I didn't want to do. And I said, listen, Angela, what is it? He said, don't even answer me. Don't answer me, just go ahead. And uh, you've always been, uh, you know, uh, very, very uh, committed in whatever you do, and I appreciate you. Uh, Dr. Campbell, my prof, I can't thank you enough because when I was handing over, you had this passion of data collection uh, methodologies and all whatnot. And I know that M1 has brains. I don't know where to start. Our incoming president, I am grateful that at least a better atmosphere is now on. This is what it is, mentoring in the time that you are being prepared to take over continuing and adding better color to it, handing over to another person you will mentor. That is one of the key things that can bring M1 to where we want to go. The acrimonies have been uh, you know, butchered and buried. I am grateful because at the time I thought I should not even continue with this association. We are mothers, but I can see what is in us. And the beauty of motherhood, the beauty of sisterhood, the beauty of success is that there must be, uh, you know, uh, uh, dissensions at one point in time or the other. That does, that does not bring enmity. So I want to thank you all for prompt response as Rosemary and I reach out to you people. Can you come over to Macedonia and help us? You said, sure, we are there. So for that, we are very, very grateful. And you have presented such wonderful topics today. You've dealt with them. And I am sure that we are not going to leave it at the platform of presentation. We have to transform it. The able national president will help us as we make our submissions, transform it, give it back to us to look at the more the merrier. There are brands that will look at it from diverse areas, all the injections. Bring out a paper, bring out a booklet, bring out a, a blueprint. Nobody know, has mastery of knowledge. Bring out a, a blueprint that M1 can run with to the communities. Continue to you know, mentor the mentoring. Anybody who is an orphan doesn't find it easy. 
Mentorship is very, very important. And you don't say I've mentored you for one year, two years, so it's done. No, it's a continuum. So I want to thank us. Please uh, uh, tell uh, Dr. Baba to bear with us. We can't continue. We can't hear her. We want to round up. It's been a fruitful deliberation. I can't but thank the national executive for the neck and now this uh, uh, symposium, call it that, of the scientific arm of her, of her uh, committee. We want to be used. We, we want to be assessed. We want to use what we have acquired to improve Nigeria. We are not doing well, but we can do well. We will not give up. When we all run away, that's not the solution. So, Madam President, you are doing a lot, but I want to tell you that it will not stop at your level. As uh, the elect comes, you will assist her also to broaden uh, this topic and to accommodate the other topics that will all be linked towards a successful effect of M1's work and belief, vision and mission to the society of Nigeria. Rosemary, I can't thank you enough. When I was saddled with this uh, chairmanship, I, I said, who are the ones that can make impact? Scientific Ogu, Technical Njoko, and many others. But you know that one of my backbones, Dr. Funke Lawson, is not here today. I decided to uh, let her rest. You know all that happened. And I want to thank M1 for being there for her through this, uh, you know, uh, trying period. So we said, let's let her rest. Rosemary, I'll work with you. Otherwise, what I do is I speak with my team. I stay behind to allow the younger ones to, you know, to express their leadership capability and ability. On behalf of my national president, on behalf of my past presidents, on behalf of the lovely medical women, Women's Association of Nigeria, my sisters, daughters, and uh, mothers, I want to thank you for this session today. And we will take what you have given us, take all the injections, and mold them and come up to give you all something that you'll be proud of. Thank you so much. Dr. Ogu, back to you. Thank you so much, Ma. Um, before we go, Madam National President, if you allow us, um, the National PRO, Dr. Vivian Omar Agoja, and the National Coordinator, Dr. Babola Agbonle, they're supposed to organize a session where everybody can open up their, their phones, open up their videos, and then do pictures for the archives. So please, if we can have that three minutes, man, then you give us your closing remarks, man. Thank you so much, man. Thank so you, you. ma'am Wokocha. It's good to see you here. <laughs> so can we go? Should we let everyone on mute? Madam President, what do you say? Yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> please unmute everyone. Huh? All right, ladies, can we see your face? Picture oh, time. My this is Professor Ogu. Hello, well done. Yeah, she's, in, she's at work. Everybody. I love you all. I'm, I'm at work. I'm at work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can we have the pictures? Charles, who's taking no, who's taking you? Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Right. If Thank I show you, I'm still in my cross. Don't take my picture, please. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Madam President, you have the floor. Oh. Well done, Ma. Thank you. <laughs> have you taken the pictures? Sorry. I'm have you pictures been taken? I'm going into a I meeting. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs>
For so I have you taking the pictures? Oh, for my, I can't see you now. Can I see you? Ah, I see you. Okay, I've taken, I've taken, I've seen you. Have you seen me? Have you seen me? Have you seen me? Have you seen me? Bye. 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 Have you seen me? You want to see how I am? Please don't take the picture. But you want to see me? You want to see me? Yes, ma. You want to see me? But don't take the picture. Okay, here I am. Okay, yes, we want to see you. I am still in my nightmare. I am. I don't know what that is. Okay. Thank you so so Bye. much. Right. I want right. to permit it's me to observe all protocols. And in addition, I want to specially appreciate well done, Professor. Everybody. Um, I want to specially well appreciate done. Professor Egwonu. I just okay. saw her because of the, okay. the photo shoot. Oh, you know, she is the best female president of the West African College of Physicians. Yes, so, Ma, we want to specially thank you for being part of this event. It's, a, it's wonderful to have you here. And, um, Mama, how are you? We have, thank you, Ma. We're very fine, Ma. Thank you. We've been, we've been having an awesome time. I do not, my heart is filled with so much joy. I don't know if I can borrow some heart to contain the joy because the one in my heart is overflowing. I need more heart to contain the joy I feel at this successful symposium. I want to thank everyone. Dr. Wokocha, thank you for waking up so early to join us over here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, moderator. You my yeah. own national president, the leg of the story, you are you just phenomenal. I want to say thank you so much. You know that we can do it. Yes. And that is why we're also having a plan for two sets of medical women. The medical women that are our NMA representatives, either elected or appointed. And we also have our medical women in leadership. But so that fun. all that we do, yes. all these fantastic oh, things we talk about, we tell it to them. And where they are already operating or working, they can start downloading and streaming. And so far, in this past one year, the response has been wonderful. Medical women are raring to go. They are firing on all the All we want to say, let God bless all our efforts with success. So today, Amen. Is day. it's not the end. What we learned from our mothers, we're handing over to our children. And we thank God for our founding mothers, both nationally and internationally, that put in this beautiful succession plan on ground, which is institutionalized in our constitution. By the grace of God, we shall not let you down. Thank, Thank you so much for being here. God bless you and bye-bye. Bless bye -bye. you. Bye. Mama Wokacha, bye. 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 I love you. President. Bye. 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 Good to see your face, Ma. I'm I know. Happy. I love you all. I miss you all. I miss you. I miss you. Thank 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 God for joining us. Yes, thank you, Ma. Thank oh. you, thank you. Thank uh, God. Vivian, I see you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so uh, much to our dear speakers. Thank you so much. Bye bye, everyone. Bye bye, everyone. Bye. bye, -bye, everyone. bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye, babies. Thank you Bye. very much. Bye, Betty. Bye, Gibebi Owa. Bye, Dabata. Bye, Ruta Folabi. Bye, everyone. Bye, MPE. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Bloody bye. Angela, Mary, you bye. don't answer your phone. Angela. Yeah. <laughs> you don't answer your phone. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. I called you, Angela. Hey, I shouldn't I'll call you again. I'll call you again. Don't worry. <laughs> okay.
So can I end it now? Can I end yes. the meeting? Yes. All end. right, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.